Hello everyone, this is Amritpal Singh. Welcome to the next video. In this video, I'll be talking about uh, the three important terms, uh, data warehouse, data mart, and data lake. So these three terms are very, very important, one of the very popular terms, right, uh, these days. So let's get started. Let's start with the first point, which is data warehouse. So what is data warehouse? A data warehouse formally, uh, we can say like it's a central repository of a data integrated from multiple sources. So we, it means we have a multiple sources of data available and we just have uh, made integration from all the different type of different sources and we are storing in a one place. That's why we call it as a central repository. So why we, what's the use case of uh, uh, data warehouse? The use case of data warehouse is to uh, help us, it uh, help the organization, help the business in decision making, right? So uh, if I talk about data warehouse, it stores both current and historical data, like from maybe from last 10 to 15 years data, it was, it's available in data warehouse that already has been cleansed confirmed confirmed and categorized right this is an important property like the data has already been cleaned data has already been confirmed to set up the some standards right uh, and it's already been categorized so uh, another point is it stores current and historical data like uh, it help us in uh, making some decisions based upon the historical data that can be from last 15 to 20 years or 15 years right so this is uh, been shown diagrammatically here, like we have some uh, uh, different uh, sources available and from where data is coming to the data warehouse, which has already been cleaned, conformed and uh, categorized. Cleans meaning is, meaning is like data has already been uh, uh, free of all the problems, all the issues, anomalies, right? Conformed means like data is uh, already conf conformed to the uh, some of the data standards, some guidelines and categorized means data has already been categorized based upon some certain parameters. So it has been coming to the data warehouse. So when data got loaded into a data warehouse, it's already modeled and structured for a specific purpose, meaning it is analysis ready. So this is another you know, uh, like pros of the data warehouse that when data is been get loaded, right? It's already been structured, it's already been modeled. So that it means you can straight away, you can run your queries to get some analysis, to get some insights of, out of data, right? Getting my point, right? So it means like once the data got loaded, immediately uh, it's, you, can, you can run your query because it's already an analysis ready, right? You can run your analysis over there. If you want to know more about uh, the insights of a data, you can do it straight away. So you can see like in this case, it's been shown here, like we have a two different uh, things shown on the left side. One is relational data, one is non-relational data. And now it's been shown here as a data warehouse. We all are aware that in the traditional, uh, like if I talk about traditionally data warehouse were uh, known to store relational data from our transactional systems and operational databases such as CRM, uh, HR, right, ERP, and some other finance applications. But we all are aware that with the uh, emergence of NoSQL technologies with the likes of uh, MongoDB and all, right, and new data sources, uh, non-relational data repositories are also being used for data warehousing, right? That's why it's shown like now, now it has been supported on both sides, relational data and non-relational data. And as already have uh, told about this, uh, talked about this, like modeled structure has already been modeled, it's already been structured. It means it's analysis ready data. Now it's going to the data warehouse. So earlier in a, in a previous, uh, like in a years, it was only relational data, but with the emergence of, or with the evolution of non-relational technologies. So it's already been, uh, now it's all also going to the, also used for data warehousing, right? Moving further, uh, data warehouse has got the three tier architecture, like, like, uh, uh, like relational DBMS also have uh, some three, uh, some different tiers available in the same way data warehouse also got the three tier architecture. The bottom tier of architecture includes the database servers, right? So we have a three layers available, three tiers available. The bottom one, uh, it's include data database servers, which uh, could be relational, non-relational or both which uh, extracts data from different sources. The middle uh, tier of the architecture consists of OLAP server, Online Analytical Processing, OL, OLAP, a category of software that allows the users to process and analyze information coming from multiple servers, right? And the top one, the, the first one, which uh, written here like client front and layer. In this case, the uh, the top one um, include the client front and layer. This tiers include all the tools and applications which is used for querying, reporting, and analyzing data. So it has got three tier architecture as of your relational database, right? Moving further, uh, data warehouses now uh, earlier was uh, on premises, but now uh, this is now going to the it's moving to the cloud. 
you all are aware that uh, today we are living in an era of cloud so uh, now we are going towards that why because uh, in response to the rapid uh, data growth and some sophisticated anal analytics tools are coming up so uh, now data warehouse has to respond to it and that's why we are going to the uh, cloud there are a lot of advantages available as well like we all are aware lower cost now limit less storage and compute capabilities and you can also scale on the pay as you go on basis so it's quite an advantageous thing that we're moving to the cloud right and now here we have shown some examples like in this case some of the popularly used data warehouses include teradata enterprise data warehouse platform oracle's exadata right uh, ibm data, uh, db2 data warehouse on cloud IBM uh, Netezza performance server, Amazon's uh, Redshift, right? BigQuery by Google, right? And Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse. These are some of the uh, popularly used data warehouses. Now let's talk about second term, which is uh, what is Data Mart? In this case, it's shown here, like we have on multiple data sources available coming from multiple sources, which we already have talked about. It is got integrated into one central repository called Data Warehouse. Now they have been shown here uh, some some. Uh, kind of a subset shown here these are called as a data marts let's talk about its formal definition a data mart is nothing but a subsection of a data warehouse built specifically for a particular business function purpose or a community of users now it means the scope of data data mart is very specific now earlier the scope of data warehouse was very uh, bigger right so because it's a subsection of a data warehouse so it's specifically built for the particular business function Let's talk more about it. The companies use the data mart to the analyze department specific information more efficiently. It means it's more specific, it's more granular, right? Earlier, uh, the previous one, data warehouse, we were having broader scope. Now it is more granular and we are more uh, specific to the department level. So it provides summarized data that key, st uh, st uh, key stakeholders can use to make some informed decisions. So earlier, the ultimate objective of all the three things, uh, data mart and data warehouse and all, to make some decisions, right, on the given data. So now let's talk about how the, these two terms are different, right? Although these two terms exhibiting almost similar properties, but how they are different. So first of all, let's talk about data mart. We, we are now comparing it on a, some several parameters, like first is scope, okay? Uh, the, as I've already stated, the scope is very limited. It is decentralized. It is specific subject area. Right. Uh, on other hand, we'll talk about in a data warehouse where the scope is quite wide. Next point is users. In this case, a user will be a particular department or a particular community. Right. Over there, it will be uh, like more communities, more users. Right. Next, next, we are having data source, the portion of data already collected in a data warehouse, a, 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 a part of it, a subset of it. Right. Data source size, obviously, because it's just a subset of a data warehouse, the size will be small and generally up to the tens of gigabytes and all. And last is data detail. It will contain the summarization, okay? Summarized data, not detailed as in the case of data warehouse. If we talk about data warehouse, not, let's talk about it. It is now centralized. Over there it was decentralized, it is now centralized. Multiple subject areas integrated together. So it has more information, more scope, right? Next point is users. Earlier the scope was very limited. There were limited users, now it's organization wide. It have more users. Data source, many sources against the single source size it can it is very large okay uh, it was earlier 10 uh, gbs we talked about in the data data mart case now it, is, it can be hundreds of gbs to P, uh, pbs petabytes as well and last is data detail it is more complete it, earlier against the summarized version of data mart and more detailed right last point is what is data lake another very popular term on these uh, internet these days what is data lake a data lake is a centralized repository that allows you to store all your structured and unstructured data at any scale it means earlier we were talking about structured data in the case of uh, this one uh, like uh, data warehouse now we are talking about all different type of data semi-structured structured unstructured at any scale right this is the advantage of having data lake so it's a system or repository of a data stored in its natural form right here we are not performing any of the like a structuring uh, before we loading our data right earlier we were doing this in a case of data warehouse right we have seen the diagram as well where it was written it is conformed it is uh, structured right but in this case we are storing data in its natural form raw form usually a, a binary large objects or files so we know don't have to uh, define the structure and schema of a data before loading the into a data lake right this is a very very important uh, characteristic of data lake right which makes it quite faster right it will be a lesser uh, consumption of time as well right 
We'll talk about it in a while. Uh, what's the difference between schema uh, on read and schema on write? A data lake captures both relational and non-relational data from variety of sources without having to define structure or schema of a data until it is read. So it's very, very important uh, thing that it help us in capturing both different, both type of data, right, from variety of sources without having to define its schema, right? Uh, right. So we'll talk about it in a while. So what are the benefits we get from the data lake, right? First, ability to store all type of data, which can be XML data, JSON, right, uh, spreadsheets, like structured, unstructured, semi-structured, the agility to scale based on the storage capacity growing from TB to PBs of data. It means highly scalable, this one. And last is saving time in defining structures, right? Because we don't have to define structure, it helps us in saving that time, schemas and transformations since data is imported in the original form. Earlier, what we, we used to do in the case of data warehouse, that we used to transform data, we used to define structure, we used to define schema, and it all, all contributes to the cost and the time as well, right? This is the benefits. Now, now talk about the, data, the comparison of the data warehouse and data lake. First is, if we talk about data lake, first is it, it stores the type of data is, it can be anything, it can be structured, example is spreadsheets, semi-structured XML JSONs, unstructured video images, right, relational, which conform to the uh, like tables, rows and columns, non-relational, like uh, which do not exhibit the uh, properties, right. So uh, schema, it is schema on read. So what is schema on read? Uh, schema on read is a very flexible approach where data is stored in a uh, raw form, unstructured form and schema is applied only at the time of data analysis or data retrieval, right? And one advantage is that the data can be ingested very quickly without the need for upfront schema design. And this schema is applied on the fly during the data query. So it is more advantages than schema on write, which we follow in the case of data warehouse. Format, it will be obviously, as I've already stated, it will be in a raw format, unfiltered one. Sources, the data can be from, uh, like it can be big data, Internet of Things, IoT, sensors, social media, streaming data, scalability is very easy to score, is scale up at very low, uh, low cost, right? And if you talk about data warehouse, it is other hand, it's a structured one, it's a relational one, right? Against that uh, unstructured or non-relational, right? It's a structured, completely structured and relational. The schema, it is schema on right. What is schema on right? It's a very traditional approach where data is first structured and transformed before being loaded into the data storage system. The structure is defined upfront and data must conform to the schema before it is ingested. So this ensure, uh, this approach although have some uh, uh, like advantages like data integrity and consistency, but it can be time consuming because we have to first convert and transform the things, right? Format, it will be completely processed data, completely vetted before we uh, load into a data warehouse. Sources, it can be application, business, transactional data, batch reporting, at last, if we talk about scalability, it's very difficult and expensive to scale. So this, this concludes this video in which I have uh, tried to discuss the uh, concepts of data mart, data warehouse and data lake. I hope you must have understood the points. In case if something is not clear, please do comment on this video. I'll happy to address uh, the all the queries and the things from your end. Thanks for watching guys. See you next video.